Good morning and welcome to Worship High. I'm Pastor Kimbrough here at Charlotte, North Carolina at the Mount Carmel Church. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you to worship and particularly on this Sunday morning, which is the Advent season. And we're so excited about this month and what God is doing and what God has to offer us. And so as we join together, take a moment to greet each other, uh, extend a warm welcome. Go ahead in the chat, extend a warm welcome to somebody. Uh, if you're new, let us know so we can welcome you in a wonderful and proper way. And as we're doing that, I want to have a word of prayer and then we'll share in our scriptural reading this morning. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for this day. And we invite your presence into this sacred moment. Knit us together across the homes that are here and wherever we may be watching or sharing in this worship. We're going to move from watching worship to participating in worship, rather through our phone, through our iPad, our computer, our TV screen. It doesn't matter because we are fully engaged in what it means to be a worshiping community. We thank you for the blessing of Christ. And yes, we are truly glad that we're able to gather by way of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, 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 beloved, as we engage in worship this morning. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to our scriptural reading from Romans, the 15th chapter, Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 7 through 13. Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 7 through 13. And there you find these words recorded. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you to the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that we might confirm the promise given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. And in him, the Gentiles shall hope. In verse number 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, that's Romans chapter 15, verse 7 through 13. And so thank you for sharing with us. Let me take a moment to welcome all of our guests who are worshiping with us or all of our Mount Carmel family as we join together. Listen, Mount Carmel, we need your support. If you have not subscribed, guest, if you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. We need your support. We want to be able to do more and offer more by way of our YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe. We need to get up over a thousand subs subscriptions as soon as possible, and that way we'll be able to go live with our mobile devices once we get over a thousand subscriptions. So please hit that button, subscribe, so very important. And while we're doing that, let's take a few moments in the chat line and greet each other. Reach out across the chat line, somebody you see there, you haven't seen them in a while, go on and sh send them a shout out, a holy uh, celebration, a word of appreciation, a thanksgiving. Let, let them know that you missed. Come on now, come on, let's take a moment and greet each other. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate the goodness 
likeness of Christ. And while we're yet greeting each other in this season, let's be faithful in our giving. It's a generous season. It's a season of generosity. It's a season of helping Mount Carmel. You're doing a great job helping so many families in our community. I want to thank you personally, and I want to thank you on behalf of our entire church family. Thank you to our ministry leaders and others who are picking up and helping each other in this community. You're doing a great work, a great work. You're doing the coat drive. You're doing the loaves and fishes. You're caring for families and supporting them in this season. So let's give. Let's give with love. Let's give with a spirit of thanksgiving. And you can do so through all of our vehicles that are there, the internet. Uh, you can do it on our website. You can do it through the cash app. You can mail it. You can stop by. Whatever works for you, God will get the glory. So thank you so much. And as we are continually rejoicing in this season, let's welcome, let's welcome our music ministry as they come to bless us in this wonderful Advent season. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And let's thank God that we are privileged to be here today.
Good morning, beloved, and welcome to worship. What a great joy and privilege to welcome you to this time of sharing. If I have not had the privilege to greet you, my name is Pastor Kimbrough here at the Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it is such a joy to welcome you during this Advent season. And I'll say a little more about Advent in a few moments. But if you're worshiping with us for the first time, just go ahead in the chat and let us know. We would love to officially welcome you in that chat. And Mount Carmel, take a moment to greet each other. I know we've had our greeting today, but if you see somebody there that you haven't had a chance to connect with in some time, go ahead and send them a holiday shout out uh, during this time and during this season. All right, beautiful. So today we launch into Advent, and in Advent we will celebrate Christ Jesus' arrival at Christmas. We do have a Christmas Eve service planned, and that's at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and we look forward to you sharing with us on that special service. But today we will light our Advent candle, and today we light the candle today it is a candle of hope. It is the candle of hope. Our hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that will be the focus of our word today. We will focus on hope. So turn with me to Romans, the 15th chapter, Romans, the 15th chapter, and beginning in verse number 7 down through verse number 15. Let me give you a moment to locate that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans, chapter 15, verse number 7 through 13. And there you find these words recorded. Welcome one another. Therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God, for I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that we might confirm the promise given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, for his people and again. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who raises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Verse number 13, which will be our focus today, May the God of hope, Fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, we still ourselves in your presence we thank you for this wonderful day to worship together and to share as we usher in the season of Advent in the hope of Christ Jesus, our Lord. We pray, God, for every person who the Holy Spirit has invited to this sacred moment and others who will join us later and some will share in this worship in a time to come but we thank you that it is a witness unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go ahead and type in the chat this morning, hope, hope, 
hope. Our hope is in Jesus. And the title for our focus today is Jesus, our door of hope. Type that in Jesus, our door of hope. In the season that we're in, this is called the season of Advent. And the word Advent means to arrive. It means to an appearance, the emergence, the occurrence, the dawn, the birth. For the Christian church, the Advent season is a season meaning that uh, this time has arrived. It's the first season of the church year. And at this time, we stop and we reflect on the biblical meaning of hope, peace, joy, and love. And so today I'm going to talk about hope. Next Sunday, I'm going to talk about peace. The following week, I'm going to talk about joy. And we will end this season talking about God's love. And so as we look in this season, we will discover and rediscover for many of us the wonderful virtue of hope that has arrived in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And when we speak of hope, we are speaking of biblical hope. Biblical hope is just a little different than the common understanding of that word. Biblical hope is not grounded in circumstances. Biblical hope is grounded in the person of God. It's grounded in somebody. When the world hopes, that hope is grounded in circumstances. You hear things like, I hope the circumstances get better. I hope my situation change. I hope times and things will change. And that's a more general understanding of the word hope. And this course, there's nothing wrong with that. But when we as believers talk about hope, we talk about it in a sense of anticipation. We anticipate that the future is going to be better than the present, not based on circumstances, but based on the fact that we are waiting for God to move. Somebody type that in for me, waiting for God to move. My hope is that God will move in my situation, in my circumstance. I'm waiting on God, like the prophet Isaiah says, wait on the Lord. And today there's somebody who's listening to me, and you may be facing some challenges, and you're hoping for a change, and you're hoping the circumstances change. Well, before the circumstances change, I want you to hope in God and say, God, I need you to be a catalyst in the midst of my situation because you're greater than every circumstance. You're greater than every situation. And it is that that's amplified for Christendom as we look in this season. That's what Paul teaches us. That's what Paul is saying about this whole concept of hope and waiting. And so we're waiting, we're anticipating what God is going to do and what God is doing. And somebody, somebody's waiting on God. Go ahead and type that in. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting. Last week, I told you about a breakthrough, uh, that a breakthrough was coming, and somebody's waiting on that breakthrough. And so in Romans 12, in Romans 12, it says rejoice. Romans 12 and 12, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Uh, Psalms 27, 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. And so that's what we do. We are patient in tribulation. We are seeking God constantly in prayer, and we are strong. Our heart is renewed. We are not losing faith, but even in the midst of opposition, we are being renewed because our hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus is our doorway of 
hope. He's the doorway to hope, and he's the hope of the doorway. And so Paul writes to the Roman community, and I want to give you some context of what is happening here in the context of Paul's writing to Rome. What Paul is dealing with is a Roman Christian community, a Jesus community, that is dealing with division, and they're dealing with separation and uh, uh, conflict. And what's happening, one of Paul's great themes, of course, is unity in the church. And he has this great vision that all the churches of the region would one day be unified as one church that follows Jesus Christ as Lord. But whenever you have groups of people together, you already know that the vision will creep in. And oftentimes the enemy will use our differences to highlight our differences (coughs) as a way to heighten that division. And so what Paul talks about is this, Paul, Paul, Paul writes, and what he's writing to in the context is that there's a division between the Jews and the non-Jews, the Jews and the Gentiles. There's a division between the Jews and the Roman Christians. The, when I say Jews, I should say Jewish Christian and Roman Christian. Many of the Roman Christians have, ha- have privilege in society. They have uh, higher standards in the Roman society. And so many of those Roman Christians began to look down at their Jewish brothers and sisters. Well, the flip side of that was many of the Jewish Christians began to look down at the Roman uh, Christians because they said, well, we are the children of Abraham. We, we've come to this uh, by way of our tradition, and it's been handed to us. And they began to think and to trumpet that they were superior. And unfortunately, this continues to happen in churches where we see people will find differences to try to prop themselves up over other believers. We've seen it done with race. We've seen it done with economics. We've seen it done uh, with male and female. And so you got to be careful because Paul is saying that our hope, that we all hope, we all belong to Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so this letter is written to challenge the believer, both the Jewish Christian and the Roman Christian, that they are both transformed in their lives, and that transformation comes to every facet of their life, including their culture, including their understanding of separation between uh, Jew and Greek, and it is through Christ Jesus, through the goodness of Jesus, that they are to be one as a church family, as a body in Christ. And that's one of the things we constantly strive for. I know it's so important to me and it's so important to the people of Mount Carmel that we have unity in the fellowship because we know that the unity of the fellowship is a sign of the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. And so we don't let educational accomplishments or educational achievement or because somebody went to this school or that school or somebody didn't go to this school or that school. We don't separate ourselves. We don't separate ourselves because somebody lives on this side of town and somebody else lives on this side of town and somebody's got this bigger house and somebody's got this size house. No, economics should not separate us. Education, even politics. Oh, I know you have your political uh, bent, but that's not to separate. We are are one in Christ Jesus. And as we grow in Christ, we begin to understand that our relationship with Christ trumpets all of these things that the world seeks to separate and divide us on. And so our hope, our hope is in Jesus Christ. He's our hope. It's not in the circumstances. It's in the person of the resurrected Christ. 
And so we hope in the Lord. That's what he's saying to the church here at Rome. That's what he's saying to this community, that your hope is in the person of Christ Jesus, not in the circumstances that are all around you. Uh, some of us will recall that uh, this is a dominant theme throughout the Bible. You might recall that during the time of Hosea, that there, when Israel was being oppressed by foreign governments and empires, that the prophet had hope. He hoped, and his hope was in Yahweh, God. He says this, he said, God can turn this valley of trouble into a door of hope. <coughs> God can turn this valley of trouble into a door of hope, like in the day when Israel came out of Egypt. And so the circumstances may be against you. It may look like there's no way that your circumstances can change. And that's why that's where hope in God comes in, because we know that God is greater than any and every circumstance. Somebody type it in for me. God is greater than circumstances. God is greater than circumstances. And so our hope is based in the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. The church believes that Jesus is, his life, his death, and his resurrection are God's response to people who find themselves in a position of being hopeless. They have nothing to hold on to. And so it is in Jesus' life, his death, and ultimately his resurrection that we find freedom from the enslavement of this world and those powers that would seek to cripple us. The resurrection, the open, empty tomb is a sign that God has not given up on us and that the stone that was rolled back is a evidence to the door of hope. Now, somebody may think that the door of hope is the, is the stone that is rolled back. Well, that may seem to be the door of hope, but the true door of hope is Jesus of Nazareth. He has risen from the dead, and when he has overcome death, that is our testimony. Our hope is built on Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We don't trust in other things, but we lean on Jesus. The writer said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And so as Christians, we look back to the resurrected Jesus in order that we can look forward to what God has for us. So we take a look back at the resurrection. The resurrection is God's affirmation that hope is yet possible. The Bible tells us that our hope is to stay alive. And what is that hope? Our hope is Christ. Jesus. And so when the songwriter said, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Somebody go ahead and type out, Jesus, our doorway of hope. Jesus, my doorway of hope. And so during this season, whatever you face, whatever's going on in your life, whatever may feel like it's not going to work, up, work out because of the circumstances that are outside of your control most often, remember that our hope 
is not simply that the circumstances will change. Our hope is in the resurrected Christ Jesus as our Lord. And so today we light the candle of hope because our hope shines bright. It shines in the midst of the darkness of this world. And all the people of God say it, amen, amen. And if by chance you've not accepted Christ as your Lord today, on this wonderful Advent Sunday morning, I extend to you the hope of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And you can do so and accept Jesus by simply repeating this short prayer after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I accept you into my life, into my heart and my mind and my soul. And I begin this great journey in faith. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please reach out to us. We're going to set some things up to make that very easy for you shortly. But our evangelism team will respond to you in a most excellent way. And we look forward to connecting when we're able again and gathering in the church. And so today, if you're listening to me and you know that Jesus is Lord, go ahead and type it in, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. And be a witness to somebody and help them to make that wonderful decision that Jesus is Lord. And all the people of God said, Amen. Today, as you can see, we will move right into our communion worship service today because we serve communion on the first Sunday of every month here at Mount Carmel Church. And I want to give you the privilege as believers to share with us during this time and during this season. And particularly during Advent, this ceremony has just a double blessing on it because we are reminded of Christ Jesus and in him we have our hope. Next week, we'll talk about peace. In him, we have our peace. And the following week, we'll talk about joy. In him, we have our joy. And lastly, we'll talk about love. And in him, we have God's love. And so as we prepare, I want you to make sure that you have your elements. You have a chance to get your juice and to get your bread as we share together in this time. And if you don't have those things, then it's okay. Just use some water if you have to and find a piece of bread or a cracker because it's not about the physical element that is used. It is the symbolism that you have paused at this time to remember Christ Jesus as Lord. And so the prophet Isaiah has said, though your sin be as scarlet, it shall be white as snow. The prophet, uh, the prophet Isaiah admonishes us uh, to uh, remember this and to do it. The apostle Paul admonishes us and reminds us that as often as you do this, that you do it in remembrance of me as Jesus has said. And Paul reminds us to let a man examine himself for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. And Jesus reminds us that as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so let us pray together. Lord, bless down this cup and bless now this bread. And we set it apart for you. And we thank you, God. For we know that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And you are the great gift of God. And so we thank you for that. And so we pour this cup, symbolic, of the shed blood of Jesus today. And we break this bread, symbolic, 
of the shed of the broken body of Jesus today. For you said as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And so let us pray. Bless now this cup and bless this bread, this sacred moment as we share together in faith in this time of renewal. And we thank you. We give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us commune together. The body of our Lord. The blood of our Lord. Amen. And the scriptures record, and they sung a hymn and came down from that place. And so as we prepare to exit from worship, but never exit from God's presence, and while we cannot sing a hymn together, we can greet one another in fellowship and in love. So why don't you go ahead and let's just give God some praise, give God glory, greet one another, extend God's love, Thank God for the privilege to share today in faith. And most of all, thank him for our hope. Somebody type in Jesus, the door of my hope. When I walk through that door, my hope is in God. And so we give God glory, give God praise. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's thank him. Let's celebrate him. For he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Beloved, as you go through this day and this Advent season, remember this is a week of hope. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Amen. Amen. Not in circumstance, but in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's follow the protocols. Unfortunately, our numbers of COVID continue to rise. And so we need you to practice the three W's. We need you to wash your hands. Make sure you wash them good. Use the static. Wash your hands. Make sure that you are wearing your mask. Put your mask on wherever you go out. Whenever you encounter somebody, if somebody comes to your house, wear your mask. Amen. Amen. I know even family members, you know, if you don't live with them, you know, be careful. Wear your mask. And lastly, remember when you're out to maintain your six feet of distance. That's the third W, to wait six feet apart. Amen. So when you're waiting in line, when you're at the grocery store, if you're out running errands, keep your distance. Make sure you keep your distance six feet. Amen. Don't crowd each other. And uh, we're going to practice these good protocols. We want everyone to be safe. And we're looking forward to the day when we can all gather together again here at the Mount Carmel Church. Again, I'm Pastor Kimbrough. Thank you for joining us. And I look forward to worshiping with you on next Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. And may the Lord keep you. Most of all, remember, share the love, share the love, share the love.